watching this video. We are Evangel Assembly and welcome to Church Online. My name is Pastor Lori and we're so glad you're tuning in today. If you're here, we believe it's not by accident. We believe that you can meet with God here and now. No matter where you are or what room you find yourself in, we believe that God is there with you and he wants to meet with you today. If this is your first time tuning in, we would love to get connected. You can log in to our central hub website, greenwall.evangelassembly.org, and fill out the I'm new card. After you fill it out, someone from the church will get in contact with you very soon. Now, we're about to get started in a few minutes, so here's the rundown for our video today. We'll start with some music where members of our worship team will lead us in songs of honor, adoration, and connection with God. Then we'll take some time to pray together, sharing our thoughts, feelings, and need with God and then we'll take a brief moment where you can, if you desire, give a donation or an offering to our church. After that, we'll hear a message from the Word of God where, that we can understand and begin to apply to our lives right now. Either our lead pastor, Pastor Brian, or a staff pastor or guest will share the message with us today. If you're watching live with us, feel free to leave comments in the chat section on your screen. It is the best way to interact with others during the service. Moderators, pastors, and other attendees are watching with you as you participate in the service. If you would like to know more about our church, you can visit our central hub website at greenwall.evangelassembly.org to get more information about us. If you want to get in contact with us, browse through our calendar, or even share a prayer request, this is the place to go. Make sure to check out greenwall.evangelassembly.org. Feel free to participate in this service however you feel comfortable. If you're new or this video just popped up in your feed, then don't worry. Sit back, relax, and watch. If you've done this before, then feel free to actively join us. You're welcome to sing along, pray with us, or even grab a Bible or even a pen and paper to take some notes. In the end, we believe God wants to meet with you and to speak to you. And we believe that he can change your life forever. We're so glad that you're here, and we hope that you are blessed by the service today. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the service.
We would love to pray with you. If you are watching live and you have a need that you want prayer for, feel free to type it in the chat and our moderators will start praying with you and for you right now. You can also text the word prayer to the number on your screen or log in to the Greenwall website. It will take you to a private and secure form where you can fill out your prayer request. Your privacy is very important to us. We don't share the information with anyone else unless you request for the need to be shared. The options for sharing are listed at the bottom of the form before you hit submit. Once you're all done, hit submit and we'll see it soon. No matter how you share your request, be assured that we as a church are praying with you and for you. And be assured that God hears and listens to your needs as well. At this time, we want to give you the opportunity to give your tithes and offerings to the Lord. This is the part of our service where we give financially to the church as a form of worship to God. If you're not in a position to give financially today, don't worry at all. No payment is required to be a part of our church. We're just glad you're here. And if you decide to give today, know that your gift is a blessing to us and others around the world. Your faithful gifts helps us serve God and others and our world in a variety of ways, including this broadcast. And for that, that we say thank you. If you would like to give, you can submit your offering online at the Greenwall website or send us mail at the peel box listed on your screen. No matter how you choose to give, the Lord is honored by it. And we thank you for taking the time. We're going to continue in our service and soon we'll hear a message from the word of God from our speaker today. Thanks for giving and enjoy the message.
Well, that's some good news. The boys will come. Hey everybody, you know, November 12th through uh, the 19th, about 21 of us from Evangel are going to the Dominican Republic to serve the Haitian refugees on that side of the border. And we're gonna be doing uh, some construction work uh, to help a church have classrooms so that they can do school for the kids because the only way those kids get school is if the church is provided for them. We're gonna do a medical clinic. Many of these kids have never seen a doctor or any kind of medical professional in their life. And we're gonna be doing kids and family ministry in multiple different churches as well. Um, so we would like to invite you, even if you're not going with us, to help us. Uh, one way you can do that is through financial giving. That if you can give uh, money, you can, it'll go for these specific areas. You'll be buying drywall and drywall supplies so we can build those classrooms for kids. You're gonna be helping us buy some medicine uh, specifically some anti-parasite medicine that we'll be distributing to the kids. So you can help out with that. And um, you can also help us with water filters that we can provide for families and communities so that they can have clean water uh, to drink and which is the basis of all health. So if you'd like to, maybe you can't go with us, but you'd like to help us in this way, we would welcome that. You can go on uh, greenwall.evangelassembly.org and you can see a place there where you can make a donation to the missions trip and 100% of your funds will go toward those project monies. Um, the drywall, the, uh, the, the, the medicine that we'll be doing and the water filters, we estimate we need about $8,500 to do the work that kind of God has put on our heart uh, to do as we've been in talking with the missionaries. So God bless you guys. Please pray for us. And if you're able to and like to, please give and know that everything you give will help those uh, Haitian families and uh, God will bless them and you because of it. So thanks guys. Church news. We've got a special new resource available for you on the Greenwall website. Simply navigate there, click on the Sunday resources tab and it'll take you to a special Google Drive to help you with your process of change and transformation. It's available on the greenwall.evangelassembly.org website for the next two weeks. Follow along with our service together. As we pray today, I want to take a moment and just be very real with you. Sometimes I know that when we pray, we offer these prayers to God and we don't feel like we're getting answers. You know, I've heard it said that sometimes when... Um, God answers pray. He either says yes, no, or wait. And that's the way he answers. And I think sometimes the times when he says wait is the hardest because maybe he doesn't actually say wait. He's just silent. This actually happens one time in scripture. One of Jesus's friends, Lazarus, was sick and he got word of it. And this is what happened. It says when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. And then he said to the disciples, let us go back to Judea. He waited for two days after hearing the request. A request came into him and, he, and they said, hey, your friend is sick. Let's go heal him because they had seen Jesus do these healings. But Jesus waited for two days. I'm sure in that waiting time, crazy things happen. And people had lost all hope. And it seemed like Jesus was being silent. And sometimes it can really feel like that in our lives too. It can seem like we offer up these prayers to God and we offer them and we offer them, but God is just being silent. But it's during those times that we need to have the most faith. And it's during those times that we need to trust God. That's what happened with Lazarus and his friends. They trusted Jesus and when Jesus came back, very good things happened. Very, very good things happened because they trusted Jesus. And all he said was wait. So today, some of the prayers that you might be offering might be prayers that you're getting silence as an answer back. And I just wanna encourage you to trust God no matter what. Believe that God's got you and have faith that he will take care of you no matter what. Let's pray. God, we come to you trusting and believing. We come to you with great faith that you are the God who hears our prayers and that you are the God that has a plan. 
And although we may not see the full plan, and we may not know, and it's a very hard and difficult time for us to trust in you, we know that we can because you are God. And so God, whatever our needs are that we're laying at your feet, whether they're needs of healing or, or needs of, um, of strength or help or restoration, whatever they are that we're laying at your feet, God, we ask that you would just remind us that even in the times when you are silent, you are still with us. God, would you remind us to trust in you today? We give them all to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, I don't know if you know this or not, but Evangel recently started a TikTok. And what we do is we share a summary of our 8 at 8 devotional on Wednesdays and then a summary of our Sunday morning message as well. So check it out. Well, you know, some things on TikTok are actually instructive, like uh, this kind of short one about problems in relationships. So take a, take a watch. You know, you just need to relax and stop overreacting. Murdered this man. Yes. You tortured him. Of course. You know, you really have to think about what you say and when and what you do, right? Our relationships um, with others provide many temptations and challenges. And if you handle them right, boy, there's life and there's growth, uh, even growth in our spiritual life. But if you handle them wrongly, there's death. <laughs> you know, your spiritual life, mine, it's built on a foundation. We've been talking about that in this series. If it's good and strong, like Jesus said, the storms will come and go and you'll stand strong, right? But if it's not in good shape, the storms will come and you will sink into the sand, uh, which is bad. So we've been talking about four pillars that we need to build our life on, um, our life with God on. And if these are good, look, you'll be good, right? If they're off, well, you're going to be off. If they're strong, you'll be strong. If they're weak, you'll be weak. So, um, and when you're weak, everything can come crashing down, even if things look good on the surface. And that's true in our relationships too. So these four pillars we've been talking about are, are receiving, remembering, responding, and relating. So, you know, how well are you open to receiving from God? That, that's critical, right? To get the grace and love that you need from him. How well are you rehearsing and remembering who you are and whose you are so that you act like that in life? How well are you responding to others and the love that you've got from God, right? That's why that receiving part is so important. And how well are you relating to others in community? Look, all of these connect. They really do. We receive from God, and then we can rehearse who and remember who we are, and then whose we are. And then out of that, out of that knowledge, we can then respond to others as we should. Now, part of that response to others is in community. Look, we need community. God designed us to, to live and grow in relationship with him and with others. You know, other people are one of the most important sources of God's grace in your life. Um, we need to seek out and protect spiritually enriching relationships of love and service. Now, this requires a commitment to fellowship and to deep, a deep recognition that we need the church and others far more than the church and others need us. Now, this takes work and determination, kind of like the TikTok video showed, that there are challenges that we're going to have to overcome to get to the good part of relationships. And look, Satan will leverage the bad parts to bring destruction. God wants to leverage those difficult parts for growth. And what we do in those difficult times is critical to our health and growth. And we're going to talk about this this week and next week, about handling those challenges in relationships, how to do it well so we can be better formed into the image of Christ and we can live life from a strong foundation. So we're going to tackle in this week and next week one of Satan's most successful tools of destruction, unforgiveness. Look at Colossians chapter 3. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. Um, if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, 
as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, um, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs um, with um, thanksgiving in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Look, we need good connections with others because, number one, we need to worship together. Uh, look at verse the second part of verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. You know, when we worship, uh, we direct that worship to God, right? But there's a spillover effect of that worship. When we worship, <laughs> It encourages others as well. And we need that. See, this is one of the things we saw in COVID, that we needed to gather for worship. Um, you see the need for this when you miss it. I, I remember when I was out sick with pneumonia. Uh, this was several years ago. And, um, and I remember my first Sunday back at Evangel. And when we got to gather together in that moment, or, or when we got to gather the last Sunday of May in 2020 after not being together since the end of March because of the pandemic. In both of those times, you could sense how much we missed being together. Ironically, we can be together every week now, but when we can do it every week, we don't value it. We let often other things get in the way and it affects our faith. You know, before COVID, the number of times Americans who did go to church, um, was dropping. In fact, it dropped to an average of 1.9 times a month. Uh, the average person who went to church, think about it, was there less than half of the Sundays of a month. And when you're not there, you're not encouraged by the worship of others. Uh, a word from the Spirit might be shared that would have lifted you up, but you're not there to receive it. You know, so many times, I have been encouraged by your worship of God when I have seen you gather together in church and when I know what you're going through and I've seen faith in you. I've seen faith in my fellow microgroup members in, in some of the toughest storms of life. You know, as we share life together close up, it has strengthened my faith when I've seen them worship God and thank God. But if I'm not in church, if I'm not in a group, I lose that encouragement. Also, when I'm not in church, I can't use the gifts God has given me. Look, spiritual gifts are gifts that God gives you for someone else. So someone else loses what you could give them. And spiritual gifts are given in immature forms, not in mature forms. They need developing. So even though God may have given you a gift, it requires you to use that. And to use it, you need others. Look, if you're not in a place where you can use them, you will lose them. You will never reach your full potential in Christ alone. The gifts God has given you will not reach maturity if you're alone. It's not easy um, bearing with one another and all the stuff we talked about earlier, and we'll get to that next week. But that's the stuff that God uses to make you and I look more like Jesus. It rubs the rough edges off of us. It matures us, and you and I need that. In fact, the writer to the Hebrews in the Bible says this in the New Testament in chapter 10, um, not neglecting to meet together as some, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now that day is the return of Jesus. And hey, look around. That day feels like it's fast approaching, doesn't it? And so what the writer here in the Bible says is we need to meet together more than, not less, to face what's coming. 
regardless of what others are doing, you need it. I need it. We need it. You know, others cannot help the way you need them to help um, if you're not in connection with them. You can't be who you were meant to be without others. We need good connections with others. Also, because we need to grow together. Uh, look at the first part of verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Um, you know, Eugene Peterson said this, there can be no maturity in the spiritual life, no obedience in following Jesus, no wholeness in the Christian life, apart from an immersion in and embrace of community. I am not myself by myself. Look, I'm better with you than without you. I would not be who I am today without the influence of the church I grew up in, without the influence of the teachers I had in college and in seminary and university, without the relationships with some of you in the church, without relationships with some of the people I've been in groups with and in my micro group. If I didn't participate in these things, I would not grow like I could grow. But here's the thing, I never would realize it. I, I wouldn't know that I was just a shadow of who I could have been. In his book, Outliers, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, who's one of my favorite authors, tells the strange story of Christopher Langan. He's a genius with an absolute staggering IQ of 195. Um, now, um, for some perspective here, uh, Einstein's IQ is 150, <laughs> okay? So anyway, during high school, Langan could ace any foreign language test. This is all he had to do, skim the textbook two or three minutes before the exam. Does that give you an idea of just how smart this guy was? He got a perfect score on his SAT, even though at one point he fell asleep during the test. But Langdon failed to use his exceptional gifts and he ended up working on a horse farm in rural Missouri. Um, not what you think with someone who'd had an IQ 195. According to Gladwell, Langdon never had a community to help him capitalize on his gifts. Langdon grew up in poverty and had an unsettled early life that was filled with abuse, which created a resentment of authority, which Gladwell reported um, Langdon still carried during his even interview for him for his book decades after his academic hardships. He had little or no guidance from his parents, his teachers, and never developed the social skills needed to cope with and overcome the challenges he had in life. Uh, Gladwell summarized um, the story of this man in one sentence. This is what he said. Langdon had to make his way alone and no one, not rock stars, not professional athletes, not software billionaires, and not even geniuses ever make it alone. You can't either. You need others. You, you need others to worship. You need to do that with others. You need to grow with others. Um, but but here's, here's the hard thing. The thing that threatens our connection with not only others, but actually ourselves and God is the third thing I want to talk about. We need to forgive. Back to our passage again, verse 12. Put on then as God's chosen, holy, chosen ones, holy, beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So also you must forgive. And above all of these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So here we come to the thing that prevents all of the good of what we have said so far. Here is where we come to the number one thing that Satan uses to prevent us from being formed into the image of Christ. Now we're going to talk about the place of forgiveness in transformation right here and leading into next week. Because it's often because of past hurt that we shut others out of our life. We don't take the risk 
to get close. We hold grudges, which keeps us at an arm's distance and keeps us not growing. And when we do this, we shut God out too. Look, you will not be formed into the image of Jesus holding on to unforgiveness. And you will not live an abundant life holding on to unforgiveness. It's why Paul goes into such great detail about this in these verses we're looking at today. Because it is a tool of the enemy to hold you back. And we take the bait because it tastes so good to us. The poison is so sweet to the taste. Look, this tool is so widely used by Satan that I remember a a, a former superintendent of over 180 churches telling me one day that he could walk into any church, anywhere, any Sunday and talk about the need to forgive others and the altars would be filled with people. You and I must be able to do this to be able to fully receive from God and be formed into the image of Christ. And quite frankly, to live a good life. Um, I, I want to look at the reasons for unforgiveness. The things that Satan tells us um, to do to convince us to not forgive, okay? Um, the offense was too great. He or she won't accept responsibility for the offense. Uh, they, they really aren't sorry. They never ask to be forgiven. Uh, they'll just do it again. They did it again. Um, They did it deliberately. I don't like him or her. If I forgive the offense, I'll have to treat the offender well. Someone has to punish them. I don't feel like forgiving them. I can't forgive what happened. Any of those sound familiar? Sounds reasonable, some of them, right? Well, such reason will lead you away from God and from real life. I want to look at the consequences of unforgiveness. Okay, are you ready? Stress and anxiety, self-inflicted condemnation, lack of trust and love, anger and bitterness, perpetual conflict, building up of emotional walls, depression and hopelessness. Can you see how these would prevent connection with God and others? This is why It is a powerful tool of the enemy. Um, How a person handles painful or abusive experiences may produce greater pain or self-abuse than the original act itself. Look at Hebrews for a minute. Look after each other so that none of you falls, fails rather, to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Look, it's not just a feeling. It's not just excusing. It's not just um, a one-time deal. That This root of bitterness that is a poison can appear in many, many of our relationships. Uh, Let's look at some areas of forgiveness. You've got to forgive God, you know, you know, in, in one of the most darkest passages of the Old Testament, we read these words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus quoted that from the cross. Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night and am not silent. That's Psalm 22. You ever feel that way? You know, great people of faith have felt that way. David felt that way. As I said a few seconds ago, Jesus quoted this psalm from the cross. There are times that you're going to feel this way and Satan is going to try to use it as a wedge between you and God. You have to deal with it correctly. Um, A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? That's from Mark chapter 4. God, don't you care? Ever felt that way? Look, you've got to deal with those feelings correctly or they will kill your spiritual life. I I want to pause for a moment. I want to ask you this. Where do you feel you need to forgive God? 
There's a second category of forgiveness. We got to forgive ourselves. I, even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. That's Isaiah 43, 25. Or this scripture, he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. That's Psalm 103, 10 through 12. You know, sometimes the one we can't forgive is ourselves. God says he can, but we can't let go. And what you do here is critical. If you can't forgive yourself, you won't ever let God forgive you. And you will live your life defined by your past. So I want to pause for a moment right here. Where, where might you need to forgive yourself? You know, the other category is forgiving others. This will be our main focus um, um, next week. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. That's Colossians 3 again. You know, um, but it also comes up in another place in the Bible too. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. That's in Ephesians 4. Notice that when you don't forgive and give in to bitterness, you grieve the Holy Spirit. Can we pause for a moment? Where, where might you need to forgive someone else in your life? You know, next week I want to talk about the road to recovery and the pathway to freedom. Um, but today I want you to identify which one of these areas is holding you back the most. Is it forgiving God, forgiving yourself, or forgiving others? If you wonder which one it is, think about what offense or hurt keeps coming up in your mind. You know, the one you most um, identified with a moment ago. I know, I know it's hard. It, it, it's hard to let go, but you need to, to, to grow, to live, to flourish. And God can help you. And we're going to talk um, next week about how you can move past this. But today, I want you to let the Spirit show you where the battle lies, where you need His help to be free of the enticing poison of unforgiveness and ask him for his grace to take a step toward freedom. Could we pause right now and pray? Dear God, we just ask you um, for your help in these areas. You know where we need to let go and forgive the most, you, ourself, or others. Give us the grace, I pray, Lord, to be able to release that to you. Spirit, show us where that area is and help us to bring it to you today and help us as we walk this journey next week to walk the path toward freedom, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Stephen Owens was 12 years old when he discovered his father's body in their Memphis, Tennessee home after his mother, Gail Owens, had hired a stranger to murder him. So Owens wrote a book called Set Free, and he talks about how he overcame the traumatic events of his childhood by forgiving his mother. You know, the book recounts the events that surrounded the arrest, and the conviction, and the death sentence, and the ultimate release of Gail Owens, who spent 26 years on death row. You know, Owens said that the book was quote, his side of the story, my honest point of view about what it was like to live through the betrayal of the one person in this world I was supposed to trust the most, my mother. 
Although this story takes place, he would say, surrounding the events of a crime story, it is essentially about the power of forgiveness and how crucial it is to find peace with your life. So Owens recounts that he didn't you know, see his mother for 23 years after testifying against her in the trial. He said this, For most of that time, because of my own anger and bitterness toward her, I did not even know my mother's whereabouts, nor did I care. Owens had decided that he would, quote, never lift a finger or raise his voice to help her. He thought his mother deserved to die. He had never forgiven her. Um, Owens described in the book how God led him for several years through a process of reconciliation and eventually to forgiveness. He said this, tired of feeling the heavy burden of unforgiveness, weary of carrying the weight on my shoulders, I was miserable because I knew I hadn't dealt well with the matters of forgiveness. So he says visiting his mother in prison was integral to forgiving her. He writes this, I had been convinced um, God was leading me to prison to extend forgiveness to my mother, to tell her that I forgave her. For more than 10 years, God had been setting me up, conditioning me, and getting me ready to see my mother. The last time I had seen my mother's face was in 1986 at the Memphis courtroom where she had been sentenced to death. So on August 23rd, 2009, Owens and his mother, Lisa, visited, um, his wife, rather, Lisa, visited the Tennessee prison for women uh, northwest of downtown Nashville. He writes this, the moment Lisa and I entered the room was an overwhelming experience. Sitting demurely, though nervously, at the table was my now gray-haired mother, who I had not seen in nearly 24 years. My eyes locked onto hers, and without the slightest bit of hesitation, I opened my arms and moved in her direction. She rose and I hugged my mother for the first time since my dad's funeral. Owens would write that the three hour visit went well, in his words, with conversation coming easily, but an opportunity for forgiveness didn't appear until the prison guard gave them five minutes <laughs> to conclude the visit. Then he says this, mother turned toward me with tears in her eyes. Sorry, Stephen, she said. I know I can't change anything now, but I just need to ask for your forgiveness. This was the open door I'd been praying about. This was what I believed God had sent me to do. I looked into my mother's eyes and I said these words, I forgive you, Mom. Bound up in my expression of forgiveness were the years of hurt and emotional pain that my family and I had suffered. A year later, Gail Owen's death sentence was commuted to life in prison, making her eligible for parole, which was granted on September 28, 2011, exactly one year to the day after she was scheduled to be executed. A week later, Stephen Owens was at the prison gate and hugged his mother as she was released from prison. God opened a door for both mother and son to be set free, her from a literal prison and him from a prison of unforgiveness. Now, I'm not saying it's easy what I'm talking about today. Did you hear the word process in this whole story? But I am saying it's the path to freedom. So I wonder today, will you take a step to allow the spirit into that space of unforgiveness in your life? Maybe it's with God, maybe it's with yourself, maybe it's with others. Next week, we're gonna outline a path forward. But today, I just want you to admit that you need to walk that path and to ask for God's help to do so, to be open to the healing that he wants to bring you because he really does 
Satan wants to use that unforgiveness as a wedge in your life to keep you separated from God and others and even yourself. God wants to bring healing so that you can connect with him, yourself, and others. So could you start that process today by admitting you need his grace to move forward? God bless you guys, and please make sure you're with us next week as we outline how to move forward toward freedom. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope that you're a little closer to God than you were when you first started watching today. If you want to know more about us or get connected to our church, log on to the greenwall.evangelassembly.org website. If you are new and this service bless you, let us know by filling out the I'm New card listed on the website. If you're a regular attendee and would like to get in touch, fill out the Contact Us card and we will get connected with you soon. Thanks for being here. Let's close in a word of prayer. God, thank you for each person that joined us online today. Thank you that we have this community and we have a way of connecting with each other online. God, I ask that you would bless each person today as they are striving to get closer to you. God, would you help them this week as they walk and as they are on this journey, God, would you help them to know you, to feel your presence, and to experience you? Would you help them to notice the times when they feel closer to you? God, would you help us to grow in your love? God, help us to love our neighbors. Help us to love you with all of our hearts. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.